Right, so I'm gonna do a uh, grenadier or grenader or whatever they're called on Gears of War 2. I wanted to try, you know, to get more into doing like dynamic poses and stuff and a lot of action movement type stuff because I really want to start implementing that more into my comic book because there's gonna be a lot of, you know, cool type of scenes like that coming in end of all. And you probably see a big difference already in the latest pages in the comic book. But anyway, um, first thing I want to establish is like movement. So I have that S curve, you see. And I'm just trying to follow that S curve, kind of. And I kind of want uh, the arm in the background receding a little bit. So I made it taper off and get smaller. And the arm in the foreground get a little bit bigger. But the main thing I want super big in the foreground was his fist. So I put a big O, you know, fist there. And then now I'm going to come in after I have the basic you know, idea of the movement, and it, it all seems to be working for me, and I got some muscle placement and stuff, then I'm going to come in and, you know, kind of do the basic fist and stuff, and since he's grenader, I'm going to put the, you know, grenade in his hand. I, I didn't do it, like, perfectly, you know, I didn't feel like going and finding all these pictures of the grenade online and see exactly what it looks like, but, you know, I think I did it close enough, so I kind of want the grenade kind of getting bigger and, like, flying off and moving with the whole S-curve movement. Notice I'm, everything is following that S-curve I made, and that's, that's, that's the, um, movement I want to emphasize and I think it makes a really cool uh, look in the end and then after um, you know I, I then go in and you know I need to put some details for the face before I start to go in and do the um, you know the actual final line work inking it and I didn't like how this head and stuff came out and uh, so I go and I erase it but I also fixed the hand I decided that's not the way I want him holding it I kind of want that knuckle kind of coming back down toward us a little bit raise his head, decide to do it over again. You know, sometimes you just got to do stuff more than once and just keep messing around with it until, until it starts looking right. But as long as you have something on paper, at least you have something to work with and correct. So you got you to put something down and don't fear that anyone's going to see it because no one will see it unless you want them to. And, um, yeah, so the Grenaders usually have these all this, like, lumpy stuff all over their body. I want it to be more comic book-like, so, you know, I'm going for more of a comic book-type look. And even in the, even when I, when I decide to add colors, I, I kind of stick with this comic book type of look, but the end result's kind of cool. I decided to do the, um, you know, do it in grayscale, because if your grayscales are working out nicely, your values are working nicely, then it's easy to get everything else working nicely. I, I don't keep those eyes. I don't like the way the little lights look in them, but, um, yeah, I get the grayscale working first. Now I'm going to go in and ink it. I'm on a new layer now, so I took the other layer, and using hue and saturation, I made it kind of bluish, and then I'm going in on, on, a, on a layer on top of that and doing the inking. I'm mixing between my two inking brushes, uh, size 3 and size 5 in Photoshop. So uh, my inking brush is basically, it's very simple. All you do is set, the only thing you set to pin pressure is the, um, the size. You don't set anything else. So that's how you make inking brushes. Just set size to pin pressure. And so notice I did some lines with the 3, the three brush and then did some lines with the 5 brush. You work at 300 dpi too, so just make sure you're working at 300 dpi to, at a decent size. This is 800 by 800 pixels at 300 dpi, and that will make it to where these brushes work nicely for you. That leg I'm ended up fading anyway, so I decide not to do too many uh, details in it. Now I decide I want to go in and make the actual um, whatever those things. They're not like uh, you know hardness. Uh, they're not really scales, but I wanted to make them all black. And, uh, you know, I, I also decide I like to make movement and stuff with my inks as much as possible, like little lines just kind of going through and coming off, and it does add a sense of movement to the figure in general when you, when you do that, when you have those little lines that just, that just shoot off the character for no apparent reason. And so now, you know, the inks are looking pretty good. I like the way the ink looks. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add black and white. So what I do is I, I colored the background in... Um, I should have colored his whole body in this color, so I didn't. So what I'm gonna have to do is, is fix that because I decided not to work with the back. I decided to keep the background separate layer, separate. But I start with grayscale and then uh, putting in the dark shadows and everything, just kind of get a feel for, you know, where the lighting is gonna be. And then I remember that no, you know what? I should do an opposite gradient. You know, the background should be an opposite gradient than he is in. So since all his light sides on his right side, then that's where the dark of the background should be. Um, then I decided to change that a little bit too, and you'll see what I end up doing with it. So I have to end up erasing on the background there so that, you know, he shows through the normal color. Then I darken his layer, his shadow layer. I'm working about four layers. I have a layer above my inks, two layers below my inks. 
the layer above my inks is where I can do the final uh, you know, brightness. When I decide to color, I just, I'm going to flatten it all down and then just color that way. But as long as I establish, you know, the main light sources and stuff that I want now, you know, I was going to go in and digitally paint it, but I decided, no, nah, it's going to take too long, and I kind of want it to have the comic book look, so um, I decided not to do that, and I kind of just leave the comic book shading. And uh, just a little bit of painterly look here and there, but not much, so it's kind of a mix, but mainly it's the comic book look. But if you, if you do work this way, it is re it's a very fast way to work, to, to work in grayscale. You can really establish your light and shadow very easily without having to worry about colors and all that. Then you can come in and do the colors. And I decided to do um, pretty simplistic coloring on him. I'm, I'm adding now the final, final brights to really brighten it out. And then I want to you know, have the background kind of reflect that. And I just quick cloud brush, just threw some clouds back there. And I have to erase part of them in the background because it's messing his image up. But that kind of gives context and reference for where the super bright light's coming from. And so then I um, flatten the image, and now I do it in hue and saturation. Uh, and then I just kind of give a little bit of color. And then I go in with brushes that are set to soft light. And I do different colors like yellows and reds and greens and blues and purples. And then I do um, color correction. And then after the color correction, um, I'm going to throw a texture on there. And also I did a couple, I did, I did a little bit of highlight with the yellow brush. I set the brush to color dodge, and I set the color to yellow. And then that, that add the final really bright light there. And then I turned the, I turned, I took the uh, texture to overlay, and I kind of turned the opacity down a bit. Now I'm just kind of using a textured brush and sort of fading out some of the stuff. So it kind of blends together. And that's it. It's uh, going to be done now.